G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, 15 to 27 and nice and sunny so look it's just bloody beautiful weather at the moment and um, look lucky it is, I've got a bit of sun coming in here but um, lucky the weather is good. Um, well, I'm doing the big shed clean up here and I've got a, a lot of stuff outside and getting reorganised, all the tractors from inside the shed here that can be moved easily are outside um, to give me a bit of room for cleaning up. Um, I've cleaned a, where I've had a big mess over through here in the David Brown, sat there, I've cleaned all that up and that gives me access to the pallet racking which I couldn't get to before so I will probably get the forklift in, drop all the boxes down and just run through what I have there to organise the parts. Um, but yeah, look, it's a, it's a big job. Um, Plasma Dave just sent me a link to watch Wes work. And um, Wes has got a, um, a shed and he's been cleaning it up and tidying it up and he's, he's a bit of a hoarder like myself, so it seems. But he got some cooler to toys than I have. But anyway, that's all right. Um, Wes's shed was, uh, he said 3,000 square, uh, square foot. Um, my shed here is 3,230 square feet, full of junk, <laughs> and, um, which is 300, a bit over 300 square metres of shed here I have. So um, I've just spent all my time recently in here doing this. Um, no work's been going on. Uh, oh, I had to, um, some of these tank bolts for the 135s, uh, 148 and 240s, the tank bolt set, the bolts that are in there are just junk, so I'm reworking these kits at home here, um, making them a bit better. We've bought the proper bolts and the nuts in those kits don't match the bolts and the square isn't very good, and so we're, we're sorting all that out. Um, I've gone downtown and bought bolts and we're, we're modifying all our kits now. All the kits have to come through here and be sorted out. The washer's tidied up and things like that. So. Um, so I've been doing a bit of that in the meantime and PDO collars for the TE20s and um, I had to make governor rods the other day and um, so yeah I've got a bit, a bit going on at home here um, the, as well as the clean up. Um, now the clean up's an important thing um, as, you, as those who watch us do regularly know we've had our business on the market and we've been putting a fair bit of work into the contracts and you know, getting the finer details sorted out and um, last week we signed the contracts. So um, the, the sale of the business is subject to finance but um, the purchasers had a verbal agreement from the bank. They showed them the figures early and they had a verbal agreement that it shouldn't be a worry. So we're in hope that that's okay. Um, and so part of... <laughs> Part of that, getting a signature on a contract for the business, uh, means that this is going to be the only working environment I will have. And I've, I've sort of mentioned in the past the big clean-up going on, um, coming on, and my knee's bloody dicky, it's playing up. And, um, but I'm, I'm not giving it a rest either, so it's my own silly fault. But um, sometimes you just got to do stuff, eh? You, know, you just have to. And um, so... I've cleaned up the mess where the David Brown is there. I've, the, the railings from the splitting stands, the Sparrick splitting stands, I've been and I've bought some nice looking brackets and put on the wall. Um, the wall above the bench that's got all the junk on it, it's still got all the junk on it. Um, I've sheeted that off with used iron that I had from the shop renovations. And I've, where the, I'll, I'll take you over and show you shortly. And, and where the... Um, where the rails are hanging on the wall there, I've, I've put a bit of box section so they can't slide off without us knowing and hurt someone. And it also strengthens the two brackets, you know, with that extra joint. Um, yesterday, I went back into Bunnings. I had some stuff to do in town and I went to Bunnings and I bought some small brackets that looked the same. And when the lathe and the milling machine come up here, we should be able to, we're gonna sheet that wall as well um, so there's iron behind it and the reason behind that is that 
Um, at the moment, the shed is just a, a single sheet. You know, I, I see in the States, because of the cold, uh, they have their iron on the outside or um, the, the outer cladding anyway, and then they have a, a piece of like wood inside to insulate it. Well, um, we don't have the problem with the cold, but where the lathe and the mill will be, um, on the front wall, on the northern wall, in summer that wall gets very hot with the sun on it. So we're going to sheet that off um, and that'll put an air gap. I'm not going to insulate it, there's no real need for that, but I'm going to sheet that off so there's an air gap and so we don't get the direct heat on the wall for working in there in summer. And um, the, that will give me an opportunity to put some nice shelving up up in my shipping container workshop, I have a shelf up behind the lathe with all my quick change tool posts and all that stuff on it. Um, and I find that works well for me, so um, I'll be looking to put a few more shelves there. Um, one trouble I do have where it's turning, it flings chips up on the top, so instead of having it right past the chuck, I might just have, say, two shelves down the tailstock end just to keep it a bit tidier. Um, but yeah, the plans are coming. <laughs> Boy, it's a big job. Um, I've, shifted the, I've shifted my office desk and the chair and the computers and all that out of the shipping container into the garage at the house. And I've got a quick little walk around video of that. And I've got that on one side, some of the shelving on the other side with normal household junk. Um, we've sorted through some of it. We have to sort through more yet. Um, it's just one of those, one of those things. Um, the shipping container I still have a little bit of work to do on with the lathe before I take it out of there and um, the thing that makes it a long job too is that um, um, the lathe needs a service so when I get it out it'll have a wash and a service and you know the whole thing so that's probably half a day's work just in that one machine and then the milling machine's always been a bit low so we're going to build a higher stand for it to bring it up so you're not sort of down looking all the time um, the bandsaw, the coolant pump's not working, but we're going to bring the bandsaw along where that Massey 135 multi-power is. So um, with the plan, I've got the 65 here. It's going to come out away from where it is and it'll end up back over behind the camera there. Um, and the, 148, the 135 will go next to it and we'll just work with them for the moment. Then where the tractor is, we're going to have... Um, workbenches and um, things like that. The big toolbox here, the big Renegade 53 inch toolbox, I've just bought another one of those and the idea of buying one of those is that I have parts stored up in boxes up in the pallet racking but they're always a bit of a pain in the bum to get to. Um, the small items like gear stick boots, wheel studs, wheel bearing kits, um, half shaft kits for Fergies, things like that. They all go in this, so um, I have some of this there, here full of parts, like the bottom shelf is pretty well full of parts, um, or the bottom box I should say is full of parts. The middle drawer there, the, the thick drawer, um, that's got the kits of compression testers and all that in it. So, so the idea is to, um, where I've got the box of junk over here, the the red shelves that I do on my computer or my um, camera charging and all that on is going to come over here. Um, we have the opportunity to run a power supply down to it so we can have constant power there and it'll be near where we film in the two bays here. Um, then coming down through the guts there where the 135 is, the press is going to go up the other end so we can get to it easier. The bench over here with the blue toolbox on it and the CRC product on it, it's going to be right down that end too. And then we're going to run a, a run of toolboxes and benches and that down. And then behind those, there will be the bandsaw and all that. So um, the bandsaw is difficult to get to over where it is, um, mainly mainly because of junk, really. So we're sorting a lot of that out. Um, but boy, it's a big job. Look, um, I've got all the plastic pots down, the blue plastic pots and all that on the walls. We're chucking them, Plasma Dave's taking them. 
Um, some are good, some are fit for the bin, but anyway, he can sort that out. And I've just been sitting there with the red pots where I've had nuts and bolts and all that, and we're getting them into the big Renegade Square um, tin boxes. So if we want nuts, we can just grab the whole box, get it on the bench and use what we need and put it back. Um, we're not going to the wall and where's this one, where's that one, that sort of thing. So a lot of work going on, but um, it's about all I'm doing. <laughs> um, and my knee plays up and um, once it starts playing up, I try and go up the front and do a bit of office work and take it a bit steady. But there's no real easy work here at the moment. It's just, you know, if you're not sweeping, you're carrying, you're shifting, you're lifting, you're rolling wheels around, you're doing things like that. So, but anyway, that, I've just got to work with it. Pardon me, the, the, um, the finance contract on the business is 30 days and it settles in 45. So mid to late October, depending how things work, um, we're hoping to be settled and um, we're, we've offered to stay with the people a couple of weeks after they take ownership as um, just to help them out, you know, make sure it's a good thing and, and you know, get them up and, up and running. We, we know the secrets of the game and um, we need to get all that information across to them and um, when they're doing it, um, we want to make ourselves available to, to keep them on track with it. It's a, it's a great business. Um, it's, we've had it for 26 and a half years now and um, it makes really nice money. Um, they'll do well out of it. Um, yeah, and <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. Um, so we're a bit excited about it, uh, but in the cleanup, I know with the Sparrick sponsorship and plus me buying parts and owning a parts shop, I've always got tractor parts coming home in the shed here. And, it's biting me on the arse a bit here at the moment because I have that many parts tucked away and you pop in the, in the shed here and you just put it there for later and put it there for later and put it there for later. Well, bloody hell. <laughs> Radiator hose and things like that. I've got boxes and the boxes, some of the parts have been here that long, the boxes have fallen apart, but the parts are still like brand new. I just have to reorganise and catalogue. So... Um, at the moment, I'm trying to get all the loose tractor parts in one place, in one box. Looks like I'm going to have to have a second box. Um, yeah, like a big box, pallet box. And um, then we're going to run through all the parts around the wall and the parts for different tractors that we have here. And we're going to catalogue them on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, just so when I'm looking for a part, if I'm looking for a, a wheel bearing kit or something like that, um, the drawers, these drawers here, we'll have them numbered. You know, we'll have them draw one, two, three, four, twenty, whatever. And um, as we do at the shop, we might have a drawer number. Then, as you have plastic pots organising parts in them, you go A, B, C, D, E, and then one, two, three. So you can have draw six, A, three. So it's line A, one, two, three, back. So we're going to use that same system. It's worked for many years with us. Um, keeps us going. Um, but, yeah, just cataloguing it. Look, it, it's a really big job to do. Um, and you would not believe, well, I suppose some of you would <laughs> believe the gear that we have here. Um, we have pallets and pallets of used parts, new parts, um, things I've bought. You know, as I buy a tractor, I'll go and buy some parts and put them away. Right, I'll need that when I do that one up. And I need that when I do one up or... You see mudguards on special or bonnets on special, so you grab one and put it away. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> I do have to catalogue all that and sort it out. So, um, uh, yeah, a lot of work there. Um, the plan drawers over the other side there, I've started sorting gaskets out. Um, and I've got a shelf for T20 and a shelf for 35 and 100 series and a shelf for David Brown, just a drawer for the gaskets. Um, there's a lot more gaskets in the old fridges. The old fridges are going. Um, even though fridges can keep things fairly clean and tidy, um, by the time you have a couple of shelves and the shelves break in them, you don't get a lot of space really for the square footage. So, um, but anyway, look, it's, it's, it's coming along. Um, we get something done every day, and um, I'll take you for a walk with the camera shortly, and you'll see. Uh, well, hopefully, you notice some difference, but I can I can show you what I've got ahead of me yet. That's huge. Um, my bloody dicky knee was playing up last night and look it was going pretty good and 
Um, I've got my chairs where I look out the door and look on Facebook and that. And, and what I've been doing is I've been sweeping and you know, shifting parts and all that. And when I feel a bit of a twinge, I sit down. And I'll take a 10 or 15 minute break and get off my pegs. And um, that's often okay. Then I can hop up and get going again. And um, in a little while, it's not too bad. Or um, I might be able to jump on the forklift and do something like that. So, um, but yesterday, I get a phone call from Grumpy Dave next door. And um, he says, can you come and get me? He says, um, I've had a fall in the shed and I need help straight away. And I said, oh, shit, all right. And so off I goes over there, and um, what had happened is he had his little go for you know, the mobility scooter, and it's a nice four-wheel drive, four-wheel thing, um, and yeah, you, know, you just sit on a seat, and it's got a, a I suppose, tiller steer, you would say, and um, pardon me, I just got a, a bit of a sniffle going on, and. Um, and what was happening was he, he thought he'd get it out. He hadn't had a run on it for a while. So he thought he'd get it out, um, charge the batteries up. He'd had the batteries charged and he thought he'd go out around the yard. And there's a, there's a step out the back, out the personnel door, probably six inches deep. And he thought he was too lazy to go and get the ramps and run it down. He thought he'd just drop it over the edge. Well, he dropped it over the edge and fell off. And... Um, then he couldn't get up off the ground, and he was in the shade, so I went over there, and he's on the ground, and um, the, the mobility scooter's here, and he says, oh, he says, I can't bloody get up. And I said, all right, where do you want me to give you a hand? So I tried lifting him one way, and he's, he's a heavy bloke, and um, little, he's a short, stocky fella, but he's, he's, he's heavy too. And um, So I tried one way, and I couldn't get him, then I went round behind and got big bear hug and tried to lift him up but because of his dicky knee from his stroke and that um, we couldn't get his legs back under him and so we're twist, twisting and buggering around and anyway there's one of those gorilla step things like a step ladder thing there um, all over near Brendan's shed and, and um, so I went and got that and I said now if I steady this and give you a hand can you hang on to that and get up and so yeah he rolled on the ground and got himself organised for that and yeah, ended up grabbing onto it and then with me helping um, to get him up, we actually got him up on his pegs, on his legs and, and um, yeah, he hung onto that. Then he walked over and hung onto his mobility scooter and sat on that and he was right. But in doing that, I stirred up my knee. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, lifting and twisting and buggering. And, oh, last night, uh, bugger of a night's sleep. But anyway, that's just too bad. Um, so today is more of an office day than a shed day, hopefully. And, and look, I've got shitloads to do, so <laughs> never got to run out of stuff to do. So, um, so th that was a bit of excitement for yesterday. Um, yeah, helping Dave, but it certainly um, certainly sent things west with my leg. Um, but anyway, that's is your neighbour, so you got to help. Um, the other exciting thing that happened was. Um, I got a new trailer last week. Um, the trailer that I'd ordered, um, yeah, it, um, it came. And they're still supplying a couple of new tyres for it. Um, it came with 195 15s on it. And I wanted the heavier tyres. The, um, they're rated at 950 kilos per tyre. And I wanted the um, 225 15s, which are rated at 1150 kilograms per tyre. And... Um, They'd been waiting on them, but um, I said, well, you know, we got a, um, I had Jackson Kemp and that looking at buying my other trailer and um, I felt I was stuffing them around a bit waiting. And um, so um, he said, oh, you can come and get the trailer, but he said, I, I won't have the right wheels on it. And, but he said, yeah, we'll do a, do a swap and muck around later. So I said, yeah, all right. So I went and got it. And there's, he had two, 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 two. 2215 wheels and tyres there. He said, take them with you. He said, when I get the other ones, I'll drop them up to Bundaberg or, or I can go up there and get them. And um, I said, yeah, all right. So did that. Got the trailer home and I put on, I took the standard ball hitch off um, because Jackson wanted a standard ball hitch on my old trailer. So I took the brand new one off my, my new trailer and put it on the old trailer and I put one of those Cruise Master DA35s on. <clears throat> um, it's got full 360 swivel. You don't get any clunking, any knock, knock, knock at the back. 
Um, yeah, nicer handbrake set up. Um, uh, they're just nicer to tow with. Very easy to hook up. Um, where the pin is, if you're not quite lined up, it still just drops on and it's got a safety tag on it and um, a, a plastic cap that keeps the moisture and all out. And if the if it's not hooked in properly, the plastic cap won't go on. So you can just do a visual and if the plastic cap's on, it's okay. Look, the hitch alone was 460 bucks, um, which is a lot of money. Um, I have one on the camper trailer and, and part of the process was um, do the, I, I wanted everything common. I'd, what I've been doing is because I had a, a ball on the red trailer, I had to take the, um, well actually I had the McHitch on that, and I had to undo the, the tongue and put the other one in and muck around and I, that was getting thin on the ground. <laughs> getting thin with me anyway. And so um, it's all standard now. The boat still has a ball on it, but the boat, um, yeah, it doesn't get used that often, so I can do it the small time that I swap over there. Um, the hoist, the hoist here, it's um, tripping the computer on the post near the controls. Um, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I might have a dicky bear in it. did that a while ago too, and I've tried a couple of times to get it, but I've got to, I've got to work with that yet. So, um, Up the other end at the bench, the CNC router and all that, we're going to shift that along a bit put the proper air, um, the suction devices and that there because that made a hell of a mess up the end there. And that's where I had the 3D printer and the um, laser engraver and they were just getting in dusty and uh, yeah, it just wasn't right, I, I, I had to shift them. Um, but anyway, look, um, I'll go handheld I think and give you a little bit of a walk around on what I've done. Um, what I've done so far, what the plan is long term, um, now I've cleared this area here, I believe I'm going to pick up the 65 with the gantry and move it over there and put it on stands for the next procedures going on with it. Um, but I might get the forklift in and do some of the part sorting first. Um, that's a good sit-down job for the day, seeing as my knee's playing up. And um, yeah, we'll work with that, I think. But anyway, we'll go handheld and um, yeah, I'll show you what I've been up to. Okay, as you come in the door here, and you look to the left, that's where the John Deere net used to be. Um, I've cleaned up all through there. Um, yeah, I've got... I've, <laughs> I've been doing things like sorting out mud guards. Like, um, yeah, they're, they're new mud guards there. Dexter mud guards, they're off the 65. The original mud guards off Goldie are up the top there. That... Um, there is full of um, mainly used parts, good second-hand Fergie parts, and so is that box up there. Um, that bench there, I'm thinking of moving that down to the other end, the working area, and the CNC router, it's going to come across into the corner next to the air nozzle, and under that um, bench there, that will give me room for the cyclone and the the dust evacuation, things like that. And I think the stuff I used to do on this bench here, um, because it made such a mess, I've got a big door there, I'll just pop it out the door and the thicknesser, I'll put wheels under that and when I need to use the thicknesser, I'll wheel it over to the door as well. Um, it's not as bad because it has a cyclone fitting on it, so we can, we can use that. Um, yeah, a lot down that end of the pallet rack and it's not too bad. Um, you know, I've got piles of junk everywhere at the moment. Um, the Massey 20, I haven't had time to play with that just at the moment, but I've got the rims painted and I do have four brand new front wheels sitting there, two tyres for that and I do have some for the 135 and the 65. Um, up there, they're just Fergie rims and Fergie weights, you know, front wheels, full centre front wheels and things. Um, that over there, that's clutches and starter motors and hydraulic pumps, brand new. Um, Ford 4000 parts, bonnets, seats, radiators. Um, 
I've got the new short block for the Ford 4600 plus used seats that I'm trying to find places for. <laughs> that big box up there is manuals. That stuff up there I need to go through, that's left over from Dad's estate. Um, the 2030, I was talking to a bloke the other day, possibly we have a gearbox for that, so that'll be good to get that sorted. All these plastic pots here, I've been going through all of those and you can see their nuts and bolts and things like that. Um, so far, we have one just full of, this is UNC nuts only. Um, so we've got a couple of spare spots there, but like in, in quarter, we have quarter UNC nuts and there's some stainless nylocks and some normal nylux. Um, five sixteenth, we have the normal, we have nylock, we have crimp lock and Well, they're nylock. Oh, they're stainless nylock. Same with 3.8. Um, nylock and black bolts. Um, 7.16th. A few half inch. So, I don't have more to go there yet. Um, but the red pots I'm thinking of keeping. Um, but I do have to... I started sorting the bolts out into, like, quarter UNC. But the pot doesn't... <laughs> Doesn't, it hasn't got enough holes in it, so I'm going to have to go to a bigger pot. Um, over here we're starting on washers. We have plastic pots full of washers and um, we've got a whole box there just on UNF nuts. So they will end up in, a, in another tin just like that. When we look over here where the David Brown was, we have clear floor, which we haven't seen for ages. Um, ages and ages and ages. Um, these are the wheels for the 135 multi-power with new tyres. Um, I've got new rims, the spare 65 rears there. Um, this here is mufflers and farm all parts. Mud guards for the 135, which I should get down. Um, yeah, just parts, hydraulic pump parts, and grease cans and all that. Um, this is all Massey 148 parts, Massey 148 parts, Ferguson bonnets, Ferguson sides. Um, what I've started doing here is, yeah, so there's David Brown gaskets and fan belts. Ferguson. Oh, Massey Ferguson and the bottom one. They sag a little bit. Yeah, Massey Ferguson. Oh, they're T20. This bottom drawer's T20. So we'll we'll have all that marked up. These drawers, they sag a little bit for some reason. Um, but anyway. And these ones here have all the hydraulic fittings and hardware and electrical stuff. And, yeah, just junk. Um, those parts here are mainly 65, so we'll sort be sorting that out, and the 65's just over there with the final drives. So once I get the forklift in and get those boxes down and sort through them and work out, just get a bit of better organisation there, well then the 65 here will end up in this bay here. Now. I've got some CRC here. I've got spare parts here in boxes. I've got parts down there in boxes. I've got parts down there in boxes, an old clutch. Um, little brackets and all from America for holding wires on fuel tanks and things like that. Um, this is all the electrical stuff, fuses and all that that we pulled out of Queensland tractor spares years ago. <laughs> Pardon me. Pulled out of there years ago, you know, relay brackets and scotch, scotch locks and things. It, it just wasn't selling. And so we pulled it out, you know, wrote it off and got rid of it all. And um, Jess Hoshiana switches and things. Um, so they're all going in, a, in one of those renegade red boxes. Um, 
that's a flow meter kit I got from down south, but the 135 multi-power here, see I've just been putting junk on it. Well, it's gonna go over next to the 65 in this space here. Then, when we, when we look at where that is, that's gonna be where the press is and the row of toolboxes down there. We'll have a nice wide walkway and yeah, you can't see much there, can you, because of the light. Um, they're the brackets we made for the rails for the splitting stands. They're, a, um, they're quite a nice looking bracket, I reckon. Um, hang on, there's one. They're about $11 from Bunnings. And they have smaller ones that we'll be using for around the lathe and all that, so it all matches. That wall has been all sheeted off now. Um, look, it's tacked in place and um, you can see the nails there holding it in place and holding it all level. And um, I'm not sure whether we bring shelves down here or what we do there. These fridges and all are going. And once we sheet this gap here and start down there, well, that's where the lathe and all will go in through here. Now this um, Renegade thing where I have my parts and that at the moment, that will end up over at the hoist there where that box of parts is and out of the way. Or it may end up down the middle there, we'll see. Um, the welding bench ends up at the door. We've got room outside now um, to build a slab. Of, we're going to put a slab and put the compressor outside and we'll have three drill presses coming up along here. This grinder, this grinder with the belt sander, that is the thing I use the most. So it will be right up at the end of the bench um, when we come up past the junk bench here. I've cleaned up, look, underneath's looking pretty good. Look at the big magnetic chuck and that's a face plate off a um, clutch surfacer that I saved one time. Oh, hang on. That's a good bit of gear. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of cleaning out along here and a lot of throwing out. Um, still a lot more to do. But when we come outside, oh, down through here, we've got oil and that's getting looked at as well. Um, it just needs to. Then, oh, they can blow away out there. And then I've got all the Tractors that were inside, outside, and we have lovely weather. Look at the bloody beautiful days. So, we're building up junk to burn. And some of the stuff out here is just, oh, just to find a place to put the bloody stuff. Yeah, just to get it out of the way so I can have forklift access inside and um, we'll have to deal with it later. Like that parts tin's a good thing to put parts in in the box there, so yeah, we'll go from there. We'll, we'll see how that goes. And look, I slashed the paddock the other day. It was just getting raggedy looking. So on the way down to look at the trailer. Yeah, the paddock's looking nice again now. Um, yeah, this is a new trailer. Um, stainless steel legs here. Um, yeah, you've got little hooks for chains, a place to put the wire, and I'm not real fussed with that little gap there, I'll have to fix that. The... The DA35 hitch, now, that's 3,500 kilos, and you can, you push that down and you can lock that, lock that back, and I've got a lock in there at the moment. But that gives you full oscillation left and right, up and down. And look, it feels real, they real, feel really nice to tow with. And that keeps the weather out of it. So, oh, look, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Um, full galvanised floor. Um, all these tie downs down the side here. Hot dip galvanised, the whole trailer. Um, this number plate bracket here. That sits in this bracket here when you're loading. 
Um, I reckon, when I stand at the back here, I reckon that left hand rear corner's got a slight little twist in it, but the whole thing does, um, with, with the galvanising, it does change a little bit. But yeah, look, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. The, when we look into the, oh, this winch here, that's a 12,500 pound winch um, with a Dyneema rope. Now, we'll pop this open here. So in there, we have a full hydraulic pump set up, and that's for the tilt, and we have a battery. Now, it didn't have this, it didn't have this big wire here. I've fitted that, and it comes along, and it goes to a, a 50 amp Anderson plug. So when I'm driving along, um, I have a, that fitting at the back of my ute. So when I'm driving along, it's charging this battery up. So when I get to wherever I'm going, um, yeah, it's a, it's all um, fully charged. So to lock it in place, you've got a couple of big, big heavy over centers. So we'll go around and undo them. So. Um, I can tow three and a half thousand kilograms behind my ute and this trailer weighs a thousand and fifty so it gives me two thousand four hundred and fifty odd kilos I think if I've got me sums right that I can play with um, I'll just shift that linch pin and we have corded remotes and and um, Completely remote, you know, that you can put in your pocket, but that'll just So that's fully raised and so that gives me a, depending on whether the hitch is of course, but that gives me a small lip there to, to run up on. And with the remote control, the oh, bloody sun's glaring, um, if I have the remote control in my pocket I can actually run a tractor up there and lower that while I'm sitting on the tractor and I can also run that winch with a remote in my pocket so I can sit on a tractor a dead tractor I can steer it um, up onto the ramp, up onto the trailer and um, I can have the winch working with one remote and then once I get the tractor up over center here well I can then just lower it gently um, but yeah look it's a it seems a good thing. Um, we'll just pop him back down again. I think that's as far as it'll go. Um, yeah, you have the other remotes and separate hand pieces for the winch. And, other remotes in there and we lock this over. I I thought on this it wouldn't have been bad to have that lockable. So um but it doesn't it does lock in pretty hard when you put it across but and they're they're quite a heavy cast handle. So that's what locks it down. Um, I was originally thinking of putting a little catch here or something, but anyway, look, I probably won't. Like they're they're registered and they're legal. This same trailer with the 225 tyres on it um, is registered, road registered in Australia for 4,500 kilos. Um, I didn't need to have 4,500 kilos um, because I can only tow 3,500, and it was an extra thousand dollars, but. All it is, it's the same trailer with the heavier wheels on it. So 
the jockey wheel is a tandem jockey wheel with um, it's a stainless one so so all in all look I'm pretty pleased with it I haven't played with it too much yet I, um, we have aggro trend coming up in town here shortly I'll try and come around here so it's not so glary um, yeah so I'll take the club engine in for them on it and um, yeah take a tractor in and things like that so so there you go that's a trailer you'll probably see a bit more of that now um, the other trailer my old red trailer it, um, it went home on the weekend so I went to its new home anyway um, we got it roadworthy last Friday yeah it was last Friday and the boys come and picked it up on Sunday so I'll just go up to my ute here and show you the pin that it uses um, there's a dog under here having a snooze and that's the pin which I have a spare of it's got a nylon there for it all to sit on the weight to sit on and it's got an o-ring up here to keep any moisture in that out um, so but yeah look it's nice and solid um, so anyway that's why I've chosen I, I think it's a good idea and yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with that